Hello, it's Keith here. Um, we're going to be doing something a bit different today. We're going to be unboxing this laptop here. Well, why are we doing that? That's not really the intention of the live streaming channel. Well, it's a simple reason for that. Um, I've bought this laptop to use for live streaming. Now, I wanted to buy a new machine to do the live streaming. Basically, I want to keep my other machine separate for its programming. And so I thought, well, I'll buy a cheap laptop. Um, that way I can do the live streaming with the laptop, set it up exactly as needed for the live streaming, not worry about it messing up my programming environment. And then I can, maybe if I'm traveling, I can still live stream while I'm traveling and things. Now, I wanted to buy one that was as cheap as possible. But I don't know what the minimum recommended requirements are for live streaming video, especially when I'm planning on probably using multiple cameras and things. So I had to guess. Um, and so I thought maybe it'd be interesting for you to see the laptop I bought and I'll discuss the technical specs, why I chose it, and then we'll see how it goes going forward. So, um, you know, maybe if you're interested in live streaming yourself, maybe you um, maybe can learn from my mistakes it might come down to. So, okay, well, let's open it up and let's have a look at it. So I bought this, um, I ordered this from Amazon, it cost five man, which is about $500, sort of £450. So let's have a look at it. And I seem to have it upside down, I think. Okay, so I, it's, um, it's sort of mimicking a MacBook Aero, which wouldn't have been my preference. I'd have preferred something a little bit deeper with more ports and things, but there wasn't that much choice really um, you know there was relatively limited options around so this is what I went for so the specifications that sort of interested me are it's got USB 3 regular ports on the both sides here it's got a um, type C port here which I'm hoping I can use for video out I'm not relying on that and I'll explain why in a moment it's got regular power in not USB 3 headphone socket has this one got a um, micro SD maybe it doesn't it's not something I was particularly concerned about. Some of them did, but this one, I guess, didn't have one. Okay, anyway, so let's just see if there's enough power in it to turn it on. Usually they do have some power in them. Okay, so, well, why did I choose this? Well, as I say, it was about um, £450. Uh, I forget the name of the processor. It's it's not an i3 or an i5. It's some weird thing, but it's... um. It's looking roughly around eight, it's looking about four times the power of the mini Celeron um, computer that I was using for my last live stream, and it's about a third of the power of my regular desktop. Now, I was doing some programming work while I was um, waiting for something the other day on a 10 year old netbook, and that actually actually worked just fine for me. The development environment, because I do everything with Notepad and these are emulators and things, needs very, very little performance. So really all I need the performances for is the actual live streaming of the video. So I'm hoping this is going to be enough for me. Now the reason I chose this one over the other options is the screen. Now if you can see it powering up here, um, let's have a look a bit closer. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't look particularly remarkable, from, certainly on the camera you're looking at, but this is a 3K by 2K screen. Now, it sets us a massive scaling, so it, regu it just looks like a regular screen at the moment, but what I'll do is I'll turn that off, so I'll run it at really small fonts. The reason for that is, if you're live streaming, a full HD monitor isn't enough for you. Uh, the full HD monitor is almost entirely taken up with just the video you're streaming to the viewers, and, you know, maybe you've got um, your OBS studio, but then you still need your chat open, you need your um, monitoring for your stream, and you may well either need other assets that you don't want the viewers to see. You know, maybe you've got sort of notes or something like that. So, as I say, you need more than full HD. And there wasn't a lot of options in that range, even if I was willing to go up to sort of the sort of nine hundred dollars, eight hundred pound mark, and looking at an i7 or an i5, a, a low end i7, so more like an i5, um, it was still only full HD. So even though this was much cheaper, it had that really high resolution. So I thought, well, I'm not a hundred percent certain that the the, the process is going to be good enough, but. I'm 100% certain that the monitor on the more expensive one won't be good enough. So, um, you know, the thought of buying an extra monitor for a laptop, like a mini extra monitor for a laptop, immediately after spending $900 on it was kind of like, well, I'd rather risk the cheaper one. I'm Cortana, oh, sure. and I'm here to help. A little sign in here, a touch of Wi-Fi there, and we'll have Um, how do we shut you up? So anyway, so I'm not going to go through all the setup. It's um, it's just a laptop. Looks like it's actually a um, regular English laptop because it's I'm in Japan. This is showing me all English here. So I mean I don't care about that. We're fine. But um, 
slightly surprised, I was expecting it to be Japanese. So I've changed the settings, so I've set it to 100% down from 250% scaling. And look how small the text is, it's tiny, it's tiny, tiny text. But anyway, um, I know, this is what I wanted to be able to do, but uh, it, it is, it's very small, so um, I, I'm going to have to get that USB-C converter so I can plug it into my 4K monitor, hopefully. Anyway, um, yeah, it looks great, so it's working fine. Um, what more could I ask, really, for my um, $500? We'll just have to see if it's fast enough to do good streaming on it. Okay, so I've been doing some more work on it then. I've got um, OBS Studio set up and it's now doing a test record just onto the hard drive. It's not live streaming. So the CPU utilization is around 15%, which ironically is about the same as the um, little cell on machine I was live streaming with the other day. But the little cell on was actually recording at 10 frames a second and this is 30. So uh, I, I guess that's to be expected. But the hardware compression option seems to be working okay. So yeah, that's pretty good. OBS is reporting this as being slower than 3000 by 2000, it's saying it's 2300 by something weird. Um, but I've done a screenshot of the machine and loaded it in EarthenView and it's definitely 3000 by 200. 2000, 3000 by 2000, that would be very strange, 3000 by 200. Anyway, I just wanted to show you a little trick that I've found really helpful for, for streaming. So I've got my um, OBS Studio up here and this is the visible window. You see if I move my mouse into this corner of the screen here, it appears in the recording window. And if I just zoom in, I don't know if you can see here, but I've made a Windows wallpaper where the top right hand corner of the screen is black and the rest of the screen is very, very slightly grey. The black area is the bit that records into the video and the grey area is the bit that is outside of the visible area to the um, recording. So this is something I've done to avoid the mistake that I made a lot in the past, which was where I was looking at something on my screen and talking about it, but it was outside of the viewable range. Um, and um, that hasn't really happened so much since then, so that's definitely something I'd recommend you consider doing, you know, create a wallpaper with an area patched out in that will match the recording area. But anyway, um, you know, I say that the CPU power is um, it's a slight worry. I mean, it was always going to be sort of um, just about safe because, as I say, I was buying a cheap laptop, but it certainly seems OK. The um, I think a slight concern so far is that the backspace key is there and uh, the delete key, sorry, the delete key is where I was trying to press enter. So um, I was having trouble with the calculator and it was just the key, the key was in an unfortunate place. So I guess that's just what you have to deal with. Anyway, um, yeah, very nice little laptop so far. Yeah, impressive hard drive size, 8 gig of RAM. Um, reasonable processors, incredible screen, absolutely incredible. Uh, I couldn't find anything within a price range I was willing to entertain with a screen anywhere near as high resolution as this, so I can't, certainly can't complain about that. And if there's a stuck pixel on it, I sure can't see it. Anyway, so there we go. Um, I've not finished setting this laptop up, but yeah, it's well on its way, so um, hopefully we'll be able to use it for live streaming soon. Take care now, thanks for watching, and goodbye.